Hi, welcome to the Crafts Channel. My name's Corinne Brad, and I've got a project for you today. Um, a nice little tote bag with an applique fox design on the front of it. And uh, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get your applique pieces using an electronic die cutting machine, like the Brother SDX 1200, which I've got here, which is quite nice and new and is actually my new best friend. So it's really good for cutting fabric because a lot of the time I've used electronic cutting machines for card making and things like that and I've always been a bit wary of fabric because fabric doesn't sit as flat as it should do and multitude of problems sometimes but touch wood things are going quite well. What we'll do is we'll have a PDF template of all the Fox pieces for you um, in the description below so you can click on it and download it and then you can use that then yourself to scan into your machine or save as a SVG file and plug it into your machine. So to begin with, let's just pop him over there. You need to arrange your pieces on the cutting mat. Now I've done this already and what I've done is I've cut my pieces of fabric backing. This is like a glue hot melt adhesive applique backing to the size that I need to fit the areas of my fox design. So don't ever iron on your cutting mat, because if you do, you'll bend it, as I have found to my cost. Grab your ironing board. Grab a nice piece of cotton, and make sure you've ironed it to start with. Make sure that it's flat to begin with. And also just double check the way round that your adhesive goes. On the back of this you've got wavy marks on the backing sheet. Because if you iron it the wrong way round you will end up with glue all over your iron. It's never great. Lay it down on there. And this iron is set to between the one and the two mark. You don't need any water with it, but you do need to make sure that your adhesive backing is on there smoothly and it's worth flipping it over just to double check there aren't any wrinkles in your fabric. So this is going to be the fox's body and then for his tail Again, just double check which way round. You'll soon know if you've put this on the wrong way round because your iron won't move. So there's two different pinky reds for the body and the tail. You will need some white fabric for his face and chest plate, but I've cut these pieces out already just to save a bit of time. And I've also got a small piece of navy fabric, the same fabric that the bag is made out of, just for his eyes and nose. I'm gonna trim my fabric now to the same size as my iron-on fusible sheet. And also I'm just going to make sure that there aren't any odd bits of cotton and thread because in a minute I'm going to stick this onto the cutting mat of the Brother SDX and I struggle enough to keep my mats free of dog hair and dust as it is. So I want to make sure I can keep it as clean as humanly possible. Of the excess bits. Those two bits can go in the bin. That bit, because it's bigger than a stamp, can go in a scrap quilt somewhere, because you know I never throw anything out. 
So there you've got your three pieces of fabric. Now, grab your cutting mat. And bear in mind, with the SDX, it goes in arrowhead first. And they always supply a protective sheet to cover the sticky. When you're not using it, put the sheet back on again. Saves you a lot of trouble. And then you need to apply your fabric to your mat. So this is a standard tack mat. So when you peel off the backing paper from your pieces of fabric, and I don't know if you can see on the overhead, this has now got a gluey, glossy surface on it. The glue will stick to the mat, but because it's um, a, a heat releasing, a heat activated glue, you can peel it back off again. So I'm just going to refer to the screen and check that I get within the six inch mark and the 11 inch mark. Like so. I'm going to peel off my tail piece. It's always worth saving these bits of backing paper for greaseproof projects and, and things like applique projects and foiling and stuff like that because they're really handy. Right, and I need to make sure this is within the three inch and the 10 inch area. And then there's just a small piece of the nose and mouth which goes in a sort of two inch square. So let's just cut that down. And put that in there like so. Now to make sure that the fabric doesn't shift on the mat, you need to rub it down very well. And I've found that a brayer the kind of thing that you would use for um, lino cutting is brilliant for this. If you haven't got one, even something like a wallpaper join seam roller is good. And press it down well just to make sure that it's in there securely. Because with a scan and cut machine, rather like a pair of fabric scissors, you want to keep your fabric for cutting fabric. If you use your fabric scissors on card, it will blunt it. And I have inadvertently cut a card project on this. I've only cut the one, so it should be fine, but you want to make sure that your machine can do its job to the best of its ability. And it really does cut fabric very well. These are the pieces that I cut earlier before I cut my card project. And you can see they're quite complicated, but actually they were cut very easily with the electronic cutter. So I've loaded the mat, I've said okay, it's asked me what I want to do, which is to cut it. And uh, as I cut it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then tell you a bit about the bag base and how you can make that. So, start. And the SDX has got an automatic blade depth um, measurer, which is something actually which is really good because I'm rubbish at setting the blade. So it tests the areas that it's cutting to see how deep the material is. So while he does his job, this is simply a cotton bag blank. Originally this piece of fabric was 80 centimetres long by about 30 wide and then I added some contrast strips to the side of it. As you can see, I've top stitched them so they're neater. Made straps from the same fabric, double hole double folded the edges so that when it folds up it makes a bag and uh, my brother has finished so let's just shut that now you probably can't see on the overhead camera that this is cut but I can see here you just get your spatula and carefully peel away the pieces that you need, like so. There's his little tail piece.
Now, if you're tight-fisted like me, you're going to save these pieces and you're going to cut very small applique letters out of them in future to use in other projects. And as you can see, this lifts off, because it's got the glue background on it, it lifts really cleanly off that cutting mat and it's left very little, um, like, oh, I say very little, look, there's a piece there. It's very li little residue in the way of sort of fibres and things like this. But as, um, as I mentioned before, when you're not using your cutting mat, just pop your protective sheet back over the top of it and smooth it down so that it doesn't get quite so much dog hair on there. So you've now got your pieces and you've got your fox body. You're not going to see this on a red mat, are you? You've got your fox body, you've got your fox tail, you've got your features and you've got the pieces I cut earlier, which are inner ears, end of the tail and his face mask and chest piece. Pop them there a sec. Grab your ironing board. Grab your bag blank. And I have pressed that bottom seam so I know where the bottom of the bag is. And lay your pieces in position. Now your fox body will be slightly off centre to allow his tail to just tuck in behind his legs. The tip of his tail. Oh, let's bend his tail out a little bit. The tip of his tail will go here. And the other pieces, what I'll do is I'm just going to fuse the body and the tail in first. And again, it's one of those things, try to just press. Don't iron because you risk shifting pieces. So just press it so it's held it in place. And then you can pop your tail on. This piece here so have his inner ears. do them one at a time to make sure they're in the right place. His nose and mouth, don't be tempted to put his nose and mouth up at the top of that. This piece here is supposed to indicate his snout. And then his eyes You want to position them so that they run in line with the snout and try and make them as level as possible. There's nothing worse than a wonky eyed fox. And then once you're satisfied that they're lightly glued in position, you can give them a good old iron over. And then you can begin the job of stitching it in place. Now what I've done is I've actually done a bit of embroidery to do the features on his eyes, but you can see here that I've held these pieces in place with a simple zigzag stitch. I'll just show you quickly how that's done. But I'm not going to do the whole zigzag because that will take forever. But you do need to do your zigzag stitch before you sew your bag together. So let's just get rid of my ironing board a second. Um, set your machine to a zigzag. Set it to about two millimetres by 
a millimetre and a half long. I'm now going to try and sew standing up, which is always good for a laugh. And try and make sure that you match the colour of your thread to the colour of the piece that you are sewing. So white tail piece, white thread. And then just follow the line around. And to be honest, didn't you? if you're in a hurry or you don't have a sewing machine that you can zigzag stitch with, the adhesive that you have put on the back of this will be good enough to hold it in place for you to even just run a running stitch around the outside of it. But a blanket stitch would be nice. And when you're doing the tricky pieces, your best to keep your needle in, lift the foot, pivot the fabric. Like so. And if you're new to sewing, one of the greatest pieces of advice I can give you is always remember to put that pressure foot back down again before you start sewing. Reason being is that pressure foot is what controls the tension of your thread. And if you don't put it down, you'll just end up with a massive rat's nest of thread in your bobbing housing, bobbin housing, and um, it's no fun. So make sure it's down. I've got friends that I've taught how to sew, and that is the biggest and most common mistake that any of them have ever made. Because it's an easy thing to forget. There you go. So you would ideally sew around all these pieces and then quite simply turn your bag inside out. These edges of this bag, what I've actually done is I've run a zigzag stitch down the edges of the bag so they don't fray. Match up the top of the bag. Quick zig a quick zigzag, a quick straight stitch. It's really weird sewing standing up. I remember when I was at school and we did domestic science, our teacher always told us that there were certain things we should check before starting to sew, and that was that your machine was threaded up properly, that your foot pressure was at the right pressure. And when you grow up, you think you don't have to do those things. And you do have to do those things. I'd actually taken my foot pressure off for the last thing that I was sewing. and then turn it inside out. What you can do if you want, before you turn it inside out, is you could create a box bottom on it simply by taking that point and stitching across there and trimming it off and that will give you a flatter bottom, which is what I've done on this one. As you can see there. But I'm not going to on this one. I'm just gonna push the corners out. And there you have your bag. And for those amongst you that are going, oh, what a waste of fabric. Can I just assure you that when I get home, I am going to unpick those side seams and I'm going to applique the whole lot because I don't like wasting anything. I just haven't got time to do it for you today. 
So there you go, hope you enjoyed that. As I say, it's uh, done with a Brother FDX 1200. Make sure that you put the applique backing fabric on your material. It makes it much sturdier, it makes it much easier to cut and you get a perfect cut with it. But remember to take that backing sheet off before you stick it to your sticky mat because it will cause you no end of problems if you don't. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that's inspired you to go out and buy yourself an electronic cutting machine. If you're not lucky enough, you can still use the templates the old fashioned way, so please do. And um, thank you very much for watching. We will see you again very soon. Take care. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.